the helicopter began to sputter and shake. Before I knew it, I was plummeting toward the ground. I braced for impact, and the next thing I knew, I was lying amidst the wreckage of the helicopter, my head ringing and my body battered. As I struggled to get to my feet, I realized the gravity of my situation. I was alone in the middle of the Amazon. With no way to call for help and no clear path to safety, the sun was beginning to set and the jungle was already coming alive with the sounds of nocturnal creatures, killer bugs, deadly birds, and who knows what else was waiting for me. From my training, I knew I could survive seven days tops in this deadly jungle, so it was time to get to work. My best bet was to keep moving and see if I could find any civilization. This is how I survived seven days in the Amazon. Day one. I began by taking stock of my surroundings. The helicopter was beyond repair, and there was nothing salvageable from it. My only possessions were the clothes on my back, a small knife I found in the wreckage, and a water bottle that had survived the crash. I knew I needed to find shelter quickly if I had any hope of making it through the night. I picked an open direction, carved a large arrow in the helicopter wreckage with the knife, and began walking. If anyone found the wreckage, they might find me this way, but there was so much I needed to figure out. Where exactly was I? What could I eat? And how would I stay alive when I needed to sleep? Day 2 I was lucky to have crashed near a stream of water, but I was terrified of what deadly bacteria might be lurking inside. I wanted to boil it, but had no equipment to do so. Instead, I did the next best thing. I filtered the water through my socks and blocked any bits of dirt and residue for making it through. It wasn't perfect, but it'd have to do for now. I washed the dirt and blood off my face, hands, and feet. Running that water through my clothes made me need to use the bathroom. I set about my business. Ugh. A surge of pain in my foot caused me to fall backward. My urine and blood attracted a kangaroo fish, which wasted no time embedding itself in my foot. Painfully, I quickly sliced it off with my knife. <clears throat> Note to self, don't go in the water. The stream leads me to a larger lake. Along the way, I came across various plant and animal life that I had only read about in books. Bright, poison dart frogs, colorful macaws, and monkeys swinging from tree to tree. But I also saw evidence of danger, like these strange animal mud tracks near the stream. What could that be? The problem with following the water is that at some point, every animal needs to drink, and all I had to defend myself was a small knife. With my immediate needs taken care of, I set about finding shelter for the night. I knew I needed to get off the ground to avoid predators and stay dry in case it rained. Though the Amazon is home to plenty of tree-climbing predators, it was still better than lying on the ground. I found a nearby tree with sturdy branches and collected leaves and vines to create a makeshift roof to protect me from the elements. As night fell, I hunkered down on my platform, trying to ignore the sounds of the jungle around me. I was cold, hungry, and scared but I knew I had to stay alert to survive. Every rustle in the bushes made my heart race. Every distant howl sent shivers down my spine. I managed to doze off for a few hours, but was awoken by the sound of something moving below me. I peered down into the darkness, trying to make out any shapes. Then, I saw the glint of eyes staring back at me, the unmistakable gaze of a jaguar. My heart pounding. I gripped my knife tightly and tried to make myself as small as possible. The jaguar prowled around the tree base for hours before finally losing interest and slinking off into the jungle. If it wanted me bad enough, it could have climbed up, but jaguars aren't the biggest fans of climbing, so I'll chalk this up to good luck. But I knew now I needed a weapon. This tiny knife wasn't going to cut it anymore. I broke a loose branch off a nearby tree and carved off the end of it to make a point. At the very least, now I had a spear. Day 3 I knew I couldn't stay in that spot forever, so I set out again the next morning, following the water flow. I walked for hours, bushwhacking through dense vegetation. I saw more wildlife along the way, including a giant anaconda that slithered across my path and a group of capybaras drinking from the pond. At the very least, their presence meant that it was likely no predators were around. For now, anyway. I was getting hungry. Fortunately, I was near water, and there was plenty of fish. I carefully approached the water on a nearby rock and waited for it to swim by. 
I stabbed with my spear into the water as quickly as possible and pinned it in the sand. I skinned it and took a bite of the meat. It tasted sweet, yet it was almost like I ate a mouthful of dirt. Not pleasant, but at least this would keep me going for a while. I caught a few smaller fish just to be safe and packed them in my bag. I might need them later. Night fell. Once again I found a sturdy tree to climb up and hunker down for the night. I thought I was safe until I realized I had made a colossal mistake. I heard rustling above and looked up. A nest of vampire bats that weren't too happy to see me. Not only are they one of the most dangerous bats in the Amazon, but they also carry rabies. Given how much they like to drink blood, they were looking at me as their next meal. If they got a single scratch on me, it would be game over since I don't have any injections to cure me. I had to run, fast. I held my backpack over my neck to cover any exposed skin. These vampire bats can land so light you'd never know they were on top of you until it was too late. I managed to escape the bats, for now anyway, but clearly climbing any random tree wasn't going to work anymore. I needed to be careful. I made some noise with my spear on a nearby tree. Nothing. I climbed up and took a look. I didn't see anything, so I made my branch. While I did, I stumbled on a peculiar looking spider on one of the leaves. This was my worst encounter yet, the Brazilian wandering spider. One bite and I'm dead in under half an hour. I gently broke the branch and dropped it to the ground. Knowing these spiders were nearby, I covered my skin and tucked in my clothes. I didn't want to risk a curious spider biting me somewhere I couldn't see. I tried to get some rest, but it wasn't looking likely between bats, spiders, and anything else out here. Day 4 I continued my trek along the water. I was hungry, so I started fishing again. Suddenly a black came and snapped from the water behind me, causing me to fall into the water. I quickly climbed back out and started running. They're slower on land than they are in the water, and this was my best chance of escaping. Fortunately, it didn't seem interested in me, but if there was one caiman in the water, there would likely be more, so I kept a safe distance from the edge of the water staying just close enough that I could follow it. Ha, huh, crap. The evening was approaching, and given where I was, that meant mosquitoes would quickly be everywhere. These pesky things can transfer illnesses like malaria or yellow fever. If I get sick now, there's no way I'm making it out alive. I rubbed mud on the rest of my exposed skin to keep the mosquitoes at bay. Then I kept walking. I made my way up a steep hill, this was the first high ground I'd seen that hadn't been covered by a tree canopy. If I get high enough to see over the tree cover, I'd be able to see where I should be going. It was getting dark, and I had to move quickly. I reached the top of the hill just as night was falling, and that's when I saw it. Far away in the distance, so far you could have confused it for a star, was a light. It may have been a town or an outpost or something, but either way, it was a sign of other human life. I had a North Star. Tomorrow morning, I'll start heading that way. Day 5 Getting there wasn't going to be easy. The rainforest grew thicker, and there was no water carving a path through it. I'd have to try to force my way through. The wildlife wasn't getting any safer either. I was hungry. It was time to go fishing. I quickly was able to spear a fish when suddenly, a school of piranhas swarmed the fish and in moments, devoured the whole thing. Seems like I won't be eating here. Day 6 I was getting closer. I could see the light without getting too high now. I just had to keep going. I walked so far that I was underneath a massive tree canopy. I found myself constantly looking up, just in awe of how large everything was. Something hit me on the back of the head. I heard them. Their cries still terrify me to this day. A group of monkeys had surrounded me and began to bite and attack. I tried to kick them off, but it was no use. There were too many of them. I was finished. But suddenly, it stopped. The monkeys were all looking up in the canopy, and from the corner of my eye, a large bird swooped in and stole a monkey from the group. The monkeys fled. This time, I saw it clearly. A harpy eagle from up above swept in and grabbed another monkey, and it flew off with it. Harpy eagles are apex predators, and monkeys happen to be one of their main prey. I guess today, 
I was just the bait they needed to draw them out. I couldn't wait around. I tried to wrap up my wounds with the torn part of my shirt, and I kept walking. Day 7. I finally found it. A road. I walked until I found a human being. Luckily, at a security gate for a nearby national park, there was a staff member with a first aid kit. He promptly called me an ambulance and tended to my wounds. I was a lucky one. Usually an encounter with even one of the creatures I saw meant certain death, and that's to say nothing of the dangerous plants and bacteria. My adventure was over, and I'd made it out alive, and amazingly, with only just a few scars to show for it. And that is how I survived seven days in the Amazon. <laughs>